Good morning everybody, Silas back today, and today is the day. The Crusher should be here today. I got a bunch of other things going on as well. We are gonna make some serious progress and make a lot of stuff go away, make a lot of room out here. Uh, I've got about a month to get this done roughly. Today is May 1st as of filming this. Now I know you're gonna watch this and it's gonna be some date in the future and you're gonna be like, man, Silas is way far behind. Yes, that's what happens when you work three jobs. I'm trying to get caught up on my editing, but you know, I gotta go where the priorities are. But anyway, my dad's gonna want his crusher back fairly soon, so I've got about a month to get as much crushed as humanly possible. Now the bad news is, is as of today, price dropped $50 a ton. That's very unfortunate. That makes every car out here worth about $75 to $100 less than what it was last week. That being said, most of the cars out here are ones that we either A, bought complete, and so we made money off the converters as well, so it doesn't hurt as bad when the price of steel drops. And then the other cars, B, uh, or ones that we bought by weight back during a, the, right after the lockdowns and all that when prices were real low. And so we just stacked them out here. So we don't have much invested in them. And so that being said, I think we're gonna go ahead and ship everything that I crush. As long as prices stay above 200 a ton, we'll still be okay. You may notice I've got another dumpster here as well. That's for aluminum breakage. And I was gone when they brought that. And uh, they brought me the little tiny dumpster. So I'm not gonna be able to get any weight in that. So, uh, I'm not entirely sure what to do there. They're gonna have a really light dumpster, but I guess that's their problem. They're the ones that brought the small dumpster instead of the big one. Plus, Terry is coming today to pick up a load of stuff. He went to an auction this morning, and they're not gonna sell what he wants to bid on until late this afternoon, so he just left a bid on it. He's headed this way, Sean's headed this way. I might have a couple old vehicles coming in today and bunches of other stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna get the loader fired up, get busy. We are making some serious progress out here right now, but before we continue, I wanna to talk to you about today's sponsor, which is Raycon. Now, normally when you guys see me, I'm out here making videos, and so I'm not wearing earbuds. But on days that I'm not making videos, I really like to listen to podcasts. And now I can plug my phone in to the audio jack in the loader, but you guys know when I'm working, I'm in and out and in and out and in and out of the loader 30 million times in a day. So I would have to constantly be hitting pause and that's just super annoying. So that's where Raycon comes in super handy. And I'll tell you right out the gate, my favorite thing about these Raycons is that they do not fall out of my ears. Even when I'm soaked in sweat on a hot summer day, even when I'm taking a break, maybe eating lunch, something like that. Once I put these in my ear, they are in my ear. I've had these for a while now and I haven't had any issues with them. They always connect to my phone just fine. I haven't had any failures on them. The battery life is great still. I'm telling you, these are the best bang for the buck you can get when it comes to earbuds. With Raycon, you're paying half the price for the same if not better quality earbuds. So that being said, if you're someone like me that's constantly forgetting stuff at home, you might as well just buy two pairs, that way you can keep an extra pair in your truck. But if you're somebody that's a little bit more organized than I am, you can just get one pair and then you can get insurance on them for just a few bucks. When I'm out here working and all the equipment is running, it can get pretty loud, but even with all that, they've got great sound quality. Our crusher, when it's idled up, is almost at 100 decibels, and I can still hear just fine in these. So if you're ready to get a great quality pair of earbuds at a great price, you can click the link in the description below, or you can go to buyraycon.com slash AMFS. That's buyraycon.com slash AMFS, and you can get 15% off your order. Huge shout out once again to Raycon for making this video possible. Now let's get back to crushing.
And there we go. We got it in here. Ready to go. The only issue is, is that I do not have a remote for it. My dad forgot to send the remote with it. And I, I kind of want to use the other loader anyway, the one I usually use. The one that's out here is okay. It's just kind of older and it's kind of leaky and creaky. And I feel like crushing cars would be kind of hard on it. So I'll probably just park it off to the side and go over and get the loader that I usually use, drive it out here. And I have a remote in it that I use for the other crusher. So that'll work on this crusher. And so I'll do that this afternoon. That way I can have everything ready to go and I'll probably start the actual crushing tomorrow. There we go, we're just about done for the day. I didn't get anything crushed. I even went and got this loader with the remote thinking I could crush maybe a couple loads this afternoon and then all of these cars came in. I had completely forgotten about them. They do this every year, the last Saturday of April and they usually have anywhere from 15 to 25 cars. They had 23 this year and they race them and they wreck them and they shoot them and they blow them up and then they, they usually burn one or two but they didn't burn any this year. Probably because we're in a drought here in Kansas and they were worried about fires, so that's probably why that didn't happen. But anyway, I did that this afternoon, then Terry was here too. He wasn't supposed to be here today, he was supposed to come on Friday, so that we had to get him a load real quick. So a lot of unexpected things happened, but tomorrow we're gonna start crushing. I gathered up all of my tires that were out back, or I didn't, Jason did actually. I set truck bags back there. The other truck bed is actually still back there, but he just filled them full of tires. That way I can bring these cars up here and I can peel the roofs back up on them a little bit and we can shove two or three or four tires in each one of them and especially the ones that have aluminum wheels because I'm allowed four tires per car whether they're on it or in it so I'd like to get rid of these before they change their mind. A lot of these are just bare tires and I know some places have started rejecting bare tires regardless of whether there's any on the car or not so I'd like to get rid of them while I still can. So we'll start the crusher up in the morning. I need to go ahead and dig out one of my racks and I still haven't figured out where I'm going to put the aluminum wheels. I think for now we're just going to go ahead and stack them back here. That's not the perfect location, but I think for the time being, it'll work just so we can get started. And if I don't like it, I can always put them in truck beds later. The other plan is I'm going to come in here. I'm not crushing these two trucks here, but I am crushing the old engine, the old 235 there. And uh, crushing this truck over here. I'll probably go ahead and crush the tractor. I was going to crush almost all of the tractors, but with prices dropping like they did, I may not crush all of them. But certain ones like that one there are still worth quite a bit of money just for scrap. So I'm going to get it gone. And then other ones like this yellow one here, there's just nothing good left on it really. Maybe, uh, no, the grill's gone too, so probably just a radiator and that's about it on that one. I'm keeping the beds down here. The desk, I want to pull the front of it off. Kind of a neat piece there, it's upside down obviously, but yeah, it's hard to get your hands on stuff like that. So I'll probably just take that center p uh, panel out. This air compressor, uh, I'm not sure how hard it's going to be to get the radiator out, so I may just set it aside for now. But that there I do want to crush. That probably won't be in this video. That'll probably be in a different video just because I want to make a will it crush type of video out of that one. Just because I think that might be interesting to see what that does in the crusher. For those that don't know what that is, that's an old uh, bale shredder. You would take a round bale of hay and you would drop in that and it would shred it and that way you could feed your animals with it. I know I have enough stuff ready to go to crush several loads now, especially with all of those uh, race cars and wreck cars and that sort of stuff. Although those, some of those still have converters and a lot of those still have batteries in them, so I have to make sure I go through all of those and check for those. And the plan is, is I want to make enough room up in here to where I can start stacking the bundles in this area here. 
So I think once we actually get started, it won't take that long to buzz through this. The main thing is, oh, I just tripped. Just about broke an ankle right there. But anyway, I don't think it'll take long. The main thing is, is I do have to pull the aluminum wheels off. A lot of these cars still have aluminum wheels and I need to double check the gas tanks. I believe most of them are drained already, but I know some of them probably are not. So I have to make sure I do that. One thing I forgot to mention about this crusher is this is the crusher at my dad's yard. Uh, that number that's on there, that will not call me. So if you call that number, you will be wasting someone's time and your time. So please do not call the number on this crusher. But anyway, this crusher here does not go as low as the one I have at the yard where I work. This one here bottoms out much higher, but it also goes higher. And so you can fit stuff like, uh, like that step van over there. If I could get it short enough, it would fit right in here. Whereas the one I usually use, I would have to cram it to make it fit in there. And school buses and combines and things like that fit right in here without having to make them fit. So when you crush a single car in there, it does not crush it very flat. It basically just pushes the roof in and that's all it does. And good morning. It's a nice peaceful morning out here. The birds are chirping, a light breeze rustling through the leaves. And you'd never know that uh, judgment is here. I don't have a whole lot to say. I'm going to fire the crusher up. I'm going to start with just the cars that are ready to crush. That way I can try to make some room really quick. And then I'll start processing the ones that have aluminum wheels and things like that. So riddle me this, Batman. This is a brand new remote right here. This is the one we bought for the other crusher. I took it out of the box. It works fine for the other crusher. Never had an issue with it from the day I got it. Had it for about two or three months now because the other remote was getting really worn out. I get out here now, I start this crusher, I go to crush the first vehicle and nothing happens. It doesn't work. I mean, as you can see, it lights up. It's got brand new batteries in it. It worked fine just the other day with the other crusher. So I called my dad and I said, hey, you're gonna have to bring the remote for this crusher out here because this one's not working for some reason. And then I remembered, I still have the old remote. This one here is kind of broken, falling apart. You had to push on the buttons really hard to get them to work and that's why I replaced it. It works on the old crusher, the one I use all the time as well. I tried it out, it works fine on this crusher. So I don't understand why both remotes work fine on the other crusher, but only the old broken remote works on this crusher. So <laughs> the only thing I can figure is that the other crusher works on multiple frequencies, whereas this crusher only works on one frequency and the new remote isn't programmed to that frequency. Whereas the other crusher, basically whatever frequency you shoot at it, that's what it's going to run off of.
this car just came in. I went ahead and ripped the hood off of it so I can stick it up under there so I don't make a gigantic mess on the ground, but I figured I better check it out real quick. It's clear full of scrap. Make sure there's nothing good in there. I don't think there is. This guy here used to work for the gas company, so it's clear full of gas lines. Nope, nothing good in there. Making a little progress. That van there, I tried to pick it up earlier and the stuff's just falling off of it so bad. So what I'll have to do with that is get a vehicle ready to go, set beside it, and when Jason gets here, he can take all of the loose stuff and stuff it inside of something else. I'm kind of struggling. I don't know where to stack my bundles. I'm really trying to dig out a spot back here, but the problem is the stuff is coming in so fast and I've been dealing with so many people, I haven't had a whole lot of time, but I'm making progress. I think if I just go ahead and just take everything that's there out, just move it out of the way, then rearrange everything, then I can start stacking over there. It's taking me a little bit of time to get set up. It's taking me longer to get going than what I had hoped, but you know, we'll get there eventually. That's not good. That's gonna go flat fast, so I guess I'll have to call the tire company, have them come out, patch it. It's a good thing I have two loaders. I have no clue what I hit. Just it's non-stop people coming out here. And so I was rushing up here to meet some guy that said he was out here waiting on me, and I ran over something, and he's not even here waiting on me. So he just said that or else he already left because he's impatient.
All right, there we go. Got a nice row of crush bundles right here. I think there's, what do we got here? We got one, two, three, four loads, four semi loads here. So not too bad. Goal for tomorrow is I wanna go ahead and clear the rest of this out here to where I have room to start stacking another row of bundles. I'm not sure when they can start hauling these, hopefully sooner rather than later. We actually had to shut the crusher down about four o'clock and I had to hook up to my trailer, go back to the yard where I normally work and pick up the rack that I used to load these bundles. I forgot to grab it when I took the loader out of there. And so we had to go over there and work our tails off to get that loaded up because uh, it was not cooperating. It's a little bit heavier than I thought it was. But we got it. We're gonna come in here tomorrow, keep crushing on these. We'll work through this area right here, make a little bit of room like I was saying. What took so long today to crush was a lot of these cars we had to process. We had to pull some catalytic converters, had to pull some batteries. I think almost every single one of those cars from that uh, event had a battery in it still. We've only processed about half of those cars. There's still a bunch of them left, but they're not in the way. So I really want to work on this pile right here because these cars are ready to go. Especially from about this point on back, they're literally ready to go. There's no aluminum wheels or nothing hardly. I did get one really cool car in today. It's a 1948 Chevy Fleetline. So we'll go check it out real quick and then we'll close this video out. This car at first glance looks pretty rough and it does have some damage to the roof up here. But, uh, and it's got dents and dings all over it. But you know, really, it's not that terrible. It needs a front clip, but you can find a front clip on another car, four-door, whatever. It actually came with the front clip, but it's really, really, really rough. It's got a good trunk lid. It's got most of the trim on it still, the Fleetline trim. It's missing a lot of dash parts, but once again, a four-door will provide those. One thing it does have is it has all four of the corner guards, the little expanded pieces that go on the bumper. That's kind of a rare option to have all four of those still. And then uh, it did have a windshield washer on it. The jar is inside it. It's broken, but it has all of the hardware for it at least. And he said that when his, I think it was his grandpa, uncle or grandpa, one of the two, when he bought this car new, it actually had a seat heater in it. But uh, they took that out after they wrecked the car and put it in a tractor. You can see here they hit a car head on. And the reason why this windshield is busted out is the person that was in the passenger seat their head went out the windshield and if you notice the steering wheel is all bent that's because the driver hit the steering wheel so they had a pretty bad day everybody always says oh give me that old iron I want if I'm in a wreck I want something stout you really don't because this is what happens when you get in a wreck and this is probably a, you know a 30 40 mile an hour wreck it wasn't even a fast wreck you get in a wreck nowadays with a car at 30 miles an hour and you barely even know you were in a wreck you might get a slight bruise from your seatbelt or a bloody nose from the airbag but you know, I'll take a bloody nose over a bloody top of my head any day of the week. And I don't even want to know what the bruise is like after hitting that steering wheel. But yeah, this car here, I'm probably going to sell the whole thing to somebody because I think the shell is very buildable, especially if a guy came up with the front clip. And so I think somebody will buy it. And if somebody doesn't want the uh, wraparound pieces there on the corners, I'll probably sell those separately. But uh, for now, I'm going to try to sell it all together. And if that doesn't work, then I'll start taking it apart and sell the shell to one person and the bumpers to another. You got all these tractors out here. I still haven't decided which ones I'm going to keep, which ones I'm going to crush. I think for now, since prices have started dropping, what the game plan is, is I'm going to crush all of the late model cars in the piles. I got the two big piles and the one area with a bunch of cars. So really three piles of late model stuff. Once those are pretty well gone, uh, then I'll start making more decisions on what I want to get rid of. I can't get rid of all of them if I am going to crush these tractors just because I have to have cars to get rid of these. Ones like this one here, definitely that one's going to go away. But a lot of these others, I may hang on to them for a little bit longer at least. Here's another one here that'll probably go away for sure. These rows of cars here are pretty safe. They're not really in the way. They're already organized. So more than likely, these will just stay right where they are. I've got a few crusher cars over here stacked up in a pile. And then back here, there's a couple more tractors that I'll probably dig out and go ahead and scrap both of those. Some of the more iffy stuff is like this 57 Chevy frame right here. I've had that advertised for 200 bucks forever and a day. Haven't really had any interest in it, so uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and scrap that. I don't think anybody wants these old frames anymore. I've got a bunch of old truck frames here that are ready to go. There's another tractor there that'll probably go, so I should make quite a bit of room. So, like I say, I'll get the for sure stuff first, and then I'll start working into the maybe stuff, and then we'll see how things go, and I may end up crushing a bunch more stuff too. Just kind of depends on what the rhythm I get into is. Some of the stuff like this here, really that should be crushed, but I think it's kind of cool and I just want to stash it back in the trees. And so I probably won't mess with it, probably let it sit. I'd kind of like to dig that El Camino out back there and crush it because I really don't want it. 
and there's another air compressor back there that's just junk but uh, we'll see if I get time to mess with those I would like to go ahead and get rid of the great big air compressor I'm not sure if we'll get that done or not but we'll see so just stay tuned who knows what's gonna happen next but we're gonna be out here pretty much for the next month now I do have a couple other things going on this month that will be separate videos uh, intermixed in between these I got a bunch of old cars I'm supposed to go pick up here in a few weeks and just just a few other things so stay tuned for that too anyway I'm gonna let y'all go I'm gonna head home I'm pretty well worn out if you enjoyed this one please give it a thumbs up please remember to subscribe if you haven't already and remember to get out there find an adventure we'll see you next time